Yeah, you're fifth in points. Yeah, 100 points out. Yeah. Yeah. No more championship hunt here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Checkers or wreckers? Started out at uh, Riverside Park running a strictly stock. Kept moving up one division at a time. And now we're running SKs. We built them all here with the help of Butch Jay and uh, all my other guys. And everybody else is uh, buying chassis. A lot of work, um, but you definitely get a different gratification when uh, your cars go good. Todd Owen, not only the point leader, but back in the winner's circle here at Stafford. I try to be clean. I know some other people have called me a couple of different names over the years. Boy, that is a wiggly right front. Uh, he is going to have a terrible points night. Try to take pride in racing people as they race me and, and try to be as clean as I can. With all the experience that we have, I do feel like I'm the older half of the field. Hopefully experience will pay off and be able to get to the goal that we want to this year. You gotta clean out the car once in a while. <laughs> Are you fly fishing right there? <laughs> that is a real hook, so just be careful. <laughs> just be careful. Oh, you got it! It's a good one! <laughs> get him! <laughs> but look at him, he's like, he's like yanking on the pole. Steve's actually a unique individual in, in the fact that he has not come from racing like the rest of us. Every year he's going so much further, he's learning so much more, and he, he's really kicking ass, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he loves free beer. What is your favorite kind of beer? My favorite kind of beer, I have two favorite kind of beer. Uh, free beer and other people's beer. Okay. So those are my favorites. Those are your favorites. Not to mention, he's the most funniest person you'll ever talk to. Glenn Reen's driving, his style, yeah. Or his actual driving. Yes. Um, his driving style, I would say, is effective. Sometimes. For a lot of years, Stafford's been pinpointed as a one groove racetrack, but you know, in the past years, the top has really came in, and if you're willing to go out there and you're willing to work on your, your setup and make the car work up top, there's so much opportunity to pass cars and come through the field and, and race two by two. And Rocco, he is trying to jet stream his way around the 50 car. When he did that, I was like, holy crap, he really does have a fast car. And you know, after I bait myself in to run the top, sometimes the hole gets filled on the bottom and it just kind of messes the whole ending to the race up. And here comes Kopsik. What a move for Steven Kopsik down underneath Keith Rocco. Battling with Rocco and Kopsik in the last few laps of that race was probably the most intense racing I've had in a while. Keith was basically doing everything he could to get me off the bottom. Here comes Rocco to try to make that crossover. Williams has got to guard the bottom in turn three. Hit me pretty good. I thought we were going around. Kind of slid up into turn three and four, but he gave me time to correct it. White flag is out. Final circuit. My car's just so good at the top when you get to somebody, and I just have such a great run going into the corner that it's hard not to drive to the top of them. Going to the final lap, um, I wasn't going to make the same mistake again of giving him any room. But the race is about to be decided in turn number three. Here comes Rocco. I uh, just fully protected the bottom that time, made him get to the outside of me, just kind of played a little game with him. and. Him to the line. As they rumble off turn number four, Ronnie Williams brings it back to the stripe. He definitely had the better car there, but uh, he gave me a couple shots. I mean, I, I think it's just good hard racing, and um, we both made it out in one piece. That's how it should be. I punted him about as hard as I could, and then uh, he got pretty crossed up. I had to let him save it, but you know what? That's good for the fans. And then in the last week's race, I had a really good battle with little Michael. Michael Christopher had it by inches, but by the time they come out of turn number two, Keith Rocco is back in command. I was running second to him, and I was able to jump down to the inside, going into turn three. Crossover move, Mike Christopher, going for broke, going for the lead. They are dead even in turn four. Good side-by-side -side racing. And we battled side-by-side -side for it had to be two or three laps. Really, really close, hard racing. Never touched, but um, 
you know, that's the kind of stuff that you live for is hard racing with someone like that. Off turn number four, double checkers are waving in the air. Keith Rocco will take down the win. You had a great run going and a great battle with Mike Christopher. Take us through it. Yeah, you know, uh, he was really good tonight, and uh, he got by me on the restart. I don't know how he got by me, but he got a good run down the back straighter and got under us. And uh, it's fun to race with Michael, you know. It's like racing with his uncle. We raced side by side, and we never touched, and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, we wound up second that night, and I didn't do anything dumb, so it was a good night, I guess. Last week, we didn't have the greatest of cars. We had kind of a struggle going up through the field, and with a couple laps to go, of course, I find myself battling Glenn Reen again for sixth place. It is Williams to the bottom of the racetrack. Reen is on the upper lane. Matt, as they come back to the stripe, it is car number 50 that has moved in to take over position number six. Ben Reen definitely is exciting. Sometimes uh, he puts it in spots where I don't know if the rest of us would, but a lot of times it uh, comes out in the right end. Sometimes it doesn't, but I think that's the case with all of us. Fortunately, once we were, we were taken out of the championship hunt, we basically went back to the drawing board and we're like, all right, look, we can't make it to fourth. There's no way that Keith, Ronnie, Jarvis, and Owen are all going to wreck out three weeks in a row on lap one and I'll win all four. Like, it's just... It's conceivable, but not going to happen. So once we realized that we're not going to win a championship, our whole goal mentality changed, and it was we're just here for wins. So unfortunately for most drivers at Stafford, when the 17 is out of a championship, uh, they don't really like me because all I'm there for is to win, and I'll move anyone I can or have to in order to get that win. So we get ready to end the night with the most exciting division in the Northeast. The SK Modifieds at Stafford and then a full house of cars ready to go to work. So the car felt great early on. We were running really fast. Glenn Reed just clicked off the quickest lap of the race, 19339. But look at DiMatteo, tapping him on the back bumper, letting him know he's there. We're running up front, Corey and I had a great battle. We were swapping positions back and forth. Door slammed me in turn three to take second. Thankfully, we were able to save it and uh, not lose position. Corey DiMatteo trying to wrestle the lead away from Troy Thomas. Here he comes. DiMatteo, full power move on the inside. We have a new leader, and it's Corey DiMatteo. You know, he got the lead first, and it was a long race. There was no yellow, so by the time I got the second, he was leading. Does Keith Rocco have enough to get the job done? Down the back straightaway, outside. He'll make a move down into turn number three. We've rarely ever seen Rocco make the move to the top side. So once Keith and Corey started battling for the lead, I'm pretty sure I had the best seat in the house. Five laps to go as they come to the line. I tried him on the top a little bit, and, and he, he was racing for his first win. He doored me pretty good. He stuffed the left front pretty good. Holding on by his fingernails is Corey DiMatteo. Very persistent, and DiMatteo getting a little separation. It was a good view out the window. I was kind of sizing them both up. And I'm like, well, we're racing for a championship here, so, you know, maybe I'm going to settle back in line and try the bottom. He was points racing, and Corey and I both weren't. So I settled back in line, and then here comes Reen just out of nowhere, and he, it's Reen, so. Reen makes it a three-way battle. Dive bombing down low is Rocco. Not enough room to get by to Mateo. What a classic battle we have. I tried the top one more time, settled back the line. It just wasn't working. He wasn't giving up the bottom. We got to race for the win here. That's all. That's the way we always race. So I drove it to the top. Here comes Rocco again on the top side. Di Mateo down low. Here comes Glenn Reed. It's do or die time at the point. They come off turn number four. It is Di Mateo by inches. Rocco still running the high side of the racetrack. They come off the turn. Here comes Rocco again, Matt. Does he have enough giddy up down at three? I got all the way alongside him. He doored me again really good, which you can't really complain. He's racing for his first win. Corey's going in turn one and two, and three and four, and he's moving them up exactly what he had to do in order to get that run out. Handcuffed together, coming out of turn number four. How do you feel about Glenn Reed? 
Brooklyn Rings three wide moves? Um, something very exciting, very very exciting. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, the last one in particular worked flawlessly. I mean, it was perfect, right time to do it. Uh, uh, the one before that, and then... Um, Two circuits to go. Less than one mile left to the competition. Here comes Glenn Reed. Off the turn, they the touch. Tail. Wow. I saw a chance, and I went and took it, and I don't blame anyone. It was just hard racing. I was going for the spot. If you look at the in-car camera, there's room there. I knew we weren't gonna make it without touching. There was no way we were gonna do it, but I figured that you would just rub and keep going. We got wrecked by an idiot. <laughs> it's like an explosion out of nowhere. I didn't even know what happened. And I asked my spot, I'm like, what was that all about? And he's like, oh, he's like, Reen just cleaned out Corey. I'm like, well, you can't expect anything less from Reen. If, if I wanted friends at a racetrack, I'd bring a dog. Replays are up right now. We're taking a look at it. And there's no question about it, Matt. Part of her 17, drifted up just a bit. There was contact. We were down in pit road, and he like drove all the way down in front of me to turn around to tell me I was number one, which I did appreciate. That was nice of him. He is stopping in front of the path of Glenn Rain. The window net goes down on Rain cars, and our safety crew is quickly there. I didn't deliberately wreck him. I didn't deliberately turn him. I'm sure they feel that way. and. You know, but it was hard racing, and everyone in the stands said it was just awesome. I think the best rivalry in New England short track racing this year has been Ronnie Williams against Keith Rocco. All that happened right in front of me. Now I'm ready to go battle Keith and a green-white checkered. Who will get the advantage? Rocco. He is in a hurry as Rocco blockbusters his way into the lead. I can tell that he just got into the wall, so I thought there was gonna be some damage there. We had a fast race car, which just hoping we could get around him on the outside. When we went back to green, I was just hoping that we could, uh, we could hold Ronnie off for that win. Williams continues to dig deep on the outside lane. Todd Owen is back in the hunt. They come off turn number four. Five cars, six cars, 10 cars. White flag is out. This is the one that counts the most. Car didn't go as good as I thought on the initial restart. And he was able just to pull that one out. Is anything gonna happen now, Matt? Let's see what Williams does. Not close enough to make a move. Here he comes. Rocco rolls out of turn number four. Keith Rocco has done it again here at Stafford. He'll take down the win. The world wants to know what you saw on the back straightaway with two to go. That was wild, you know. Uh, can't really blame Corey, you know what I mean? He's trying to get his first win out there and he's doing everything he could to hold me off. But uh, we had a stout card tonight and this thing was awesome. Even after he bounced off the fence, I. We bent some stuff up, but this thing was still digging. I can't thank my team enough. John and Maynard Rafano, Wheeler's Auto. We would have liked to go out there and win that race, of course. Trying to go out every race and winning, but um, we're looking at the big picture now. That race could have turned out a lot better for more than one reason. We ended up with the win, but before Reen cleaned out half the field, Ronnie was, I think, fifth or sixth, which would have gave us a lot better chance to win the championship. People were pissed that I didn't take out Keith, though. They're like, at least you could have done is wreck the guy on the outside and change the championship hunt. I wonder if Ronnie's got any room at his shop I can store this at. <laughs> <laughs>